In today's video, I'm going to tell you how to pray to God properly. I'm going to share seven things that you do to pray properly. And guess what? These are all in the Bible. Coming up next. My name is Nick Acosta, and I'm here to invite you guys to grow with me as I grow with God. So let's grow. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you can be blessed with new content in the future. You see, getting the subscribers helps us know that we are making a difference on here, okay? It encourages us to continue putting out free content. We wanna continue helping you to grow in Christ. So please do us that one favor. Okay, so the big question is, how do you pray to God properly? I don't know about you, but when I first got saved, I had no clue how to pray to God. However, that wasn't stopping me at all. I remember praying in my room for a good amount of time. And I also prayed throughout the day, wherever I went. I remember when I used to watch the cooking channel a lot back then. I remember that when the commercials came on, I put my head down a little, started talking to God the only way I knew how. I didn't know any scriptures. I didn't even attend a church. And I didn't have many Christian friends to talk to and learn from in those days. But I still pray. You want to know a secret? So in case you're wondering why I didn't attend church, why I didn't have many Christian friends, why I was watching the cooking channel, and why I found it necessary to put my head down a little to pray during the commercial break. The reason is because I was born again in 2010 inside of a county jail facing life in prison. That's right. So there was no church there, very few real Christians there. The best shows to watch were the cooking ones. And I was in the middle of the day room watching TV with dozens and dozens of other inmates. So I put my head down a little so that they didn't see me talking to myself and think I was crazy. If you know me, you know my testimony and how I am out here in the free world right now and not in prison. It's all God, so supernatural. The power of the gospel just intervened greatly in my life then. One of these days, I will share my testimony on here with you guys. So now you understand, if I didn't have most of the stuff or knowledge back then that you probably have now and still manage to pray, I am sure you can pray too. Even without watching this video, I know you can start talking to God in the only way you know how and just be real with him by expressing yourself to him and asking for his intervention. So you don't need any special keys and tips to pray. But what I am about to share with you from scripture will take your prayer life in relationship with the Lord to a whole nother level that you need to be in, okay? So let's grow. Before we begin, I just wanna let you know that these are not in any specific order, okay? I usually like to start praying with Thanksgiving, but after that Thanksgiving part, the order may change, okay? So don't worry about order and the time of day that you pray and how long you last and all that stuff, okay? Just spend time with God. That's what we all need to do. The first thing we can do to pray properly is Thanksgiving. I already told you that, right? So that's how I start praying. When you wanna spend private time with God, start by thanking Him for the day, for His mercy, for His grace, for his presence and for everything that he provides you with as his child. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Colossians 4, 2 says, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So start giving God thanks for all that he's done in the past, currently doing, and what is to come according to his promises, prophecies, and your own personal calling in him. The second thing we can do to pray properly is asking. Another thing to do if you want to pray to God properly is to ask him for stuff. <laughs> Now some people think it's not right or godly to ask God for things. So let's look at some examples of Jesus asking the Father for things. Okay? Matthew 6, 11 says that Jesus asked the Father for his daily 
bread. Mark 14, 36 says that Jesus asked the Father to take away the tough cup of persecution and the crucifixion that was coming his way. Matthew 6, 13 says that Jesus asked the Father to help him overcome temptation. The same verse states that Jesus asked the Father to deliver him from all evil. Luke 6 states that before Jesus chose his 12 apostles, he had been spending a lot of time in prayer with the Father. So Jesus spent time with God before making huge decisions such as this one. I would guess that he was asking him for direction and wisdom. So as you can see, Jesus asked the Father for things plenty of times. I should also note that he didn't ask him for riches, fame, worldly success, exquisite food, expensive clothes, and all the other things that people who don't know or have God in their lives think about and fight for all their lives. In fact, those are the things that the devil tempted Jesus with in the wilderness. So ask God for his grace, his wisdom, his leading, and things like that, okay? If you wanna ask God for something tangible, ask him how Jesus taught us to ask him. Ask for what you need today and only today. What do you need today? Food, water, a place to sleep, some bills paid or something like that, right? Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow, only focus on today. So if you find yourself praying about the next few years to come, future careers, vacations, and things like that, you're on a path that Jesus said to stay away from. Don't be concerned with the future, but serve and thank God for today. The third thing we can do to pray properly is intercede for others. Yes, this is huge, guys. Selflessness in prayer. Come on, just like Jesus. Everywhere we turn in the New Testament, we see the apostles praying for other believers or asking the churches to intercede for them. For example, Paul asked for prayers while he was in prison for the gospel's sake. And he also stated several times that he was praying for those in the churches that he was writing. If you Google or search your Bible app for the times that Jesus prayed, you will see that he prayed for his disciples and even the future disciples, AKA us, so many times. He prayed for us so many times. Jesus interceded a lot in prayer for people. I'm telling you, check it out. This reveals God's love in us to want to see God help and bless others even if they don't know, we are praying for them. They don't have to know. Over the years, I've been growing and hearing God's voice for my own life and also for others' lives. This prophetic ministry of hearing what God wants to speak to you for others' benefit is something that I started developing through spending time with God in prayer and interceding for my friends and family. So while I prayed, I would start interceding for the people that I knew. And as I prayed, stuff would pop up in my mind to pray for them about that I didn't have previous knowledge of before. I started to text these people the things that I would hear from God while I interceded for them, and they would verify that what I was hearing was spot on. So when you intercede for people during your private time in prayer, don't only expect to pray for things that you know they need God's intervention for, but expect to get the spirits leading in your intercession for them, okay? This is an amazing, private, non-flashy ministry to have because everybody needs prayer. We know that. The fourth thing we can do to pray properly is worship God. Jesus started his prayer in Luke 11, worshiping God. He wanted his name glorified revered and counted as holy. He told the Father that he wanted his kingdom to come and his will to be done. Worship is selfless, not selfish. When you worship God, you are telling him how great he is and how much you want his way and will to be done here on earth. The attention is on God, not you. Sing to him. Tell him who he is to you and tell him how awesome he is because he's so, so great and awesome and mighty and powerful and amazing. We can't tell him enough. His word says it everywhere. Adore him, not yourself, your ministry or your current situation. Adore him. Just play.
place your attention on Him. The fifth thing we can do to pray properly is to repent of our sins. You can repent of your sins in prayer and it's so, so important. In Luke 11, 4, Jesus says that his disciples should ask the Father to forgive them of their sins. Now, I don't think that Jesus usually asked that from the Father because the Bible tells us that he never sinned himself. But I know he wants us to repent, to leave anything evil and carnal that we do or think. He wants us to ask him for forgiveness and he wants us to make the decision to serve him and not ourselves and fleshy desires. That's what repentance is. When we leave our sinful habits and choose God's way of righteousness. If I start praying and I know that I was rude to my wife or that I didn't walk in love or humility with someone that day or the day before, I will talk to God about it right away. I will try to avoid it because he already knows we did it. And the Bible says that we must confess or admit our sins to be cleansed from them by Christ's sacrificial blood. God knows we did it. He wants us to admit it. Let's be real with him. So just get to it and talk to him about it. Don't ignore it. Confess and ask him to forgive you of those sins and leave them behind. But don't just say, forgive me, Lord, when you know you're going to do it again intentionally. That's not repentance. Repentance is when you hate the sin you did or keep doing and you have decided deep within that you are walking away from it and choosing to obey God. Okay, that's repentance. The sixth thing we can do to pray properly is to pray in the spirit. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says that when we pray in tongues, we are praying something that we don't understand. Romans 8, 26 says, likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Jude 1.20 says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. I don't know what denominational background you may come from, and I really don't care. I don't consider myself a Baptist, a Pentecostal, a Methodist, or any of that. I just read the Bible, and if I see something more than one time, and it makes sense the way that scripture already lays it down, without any denomination having to interpret what it really means and add on to it for me, I just do it, and I take it as the Word of God, okay? Praying in the Spirit is one of those things that I see in the New Testament as something that we ought to do and that is not referring to speaking a different language on a mission field, but something that nobody understands in your private time of prayer. 1 Corinthians 14, 39 states that we ought not to forbid anyone to pray in tongues. It's good for you. That's why Paul said that he did it more than those he was writing his letters to. It's something that you won't understand, but it will be the Spirit of God in you, helping you to pray God's will. Since you don't understand it, you should only do it in your private time with God when you're alone. Because nobody can understand and therefore it won't help them, right? <laughs> it only helps you. It's the Spirit praying through you. The seventh and last thing we can do to pray properly is to listen. Just listen to God. Prayer is a conversation. So as much as you talk, you ought to let him talk. Again, Jesus spent so much time in prayer and it's because he needed to stay connected to the Father's voice, to his direction. If Jesus needed to hear from the Father, so do we. Jesus only did what he was shown by the Father and he only said what he heard from the Father. During prayer, it is so important to just hear from God. What will we hear when we just sit there quietly? <laughs> Conviction, correction, instruction about what to do next in our lives, our marriage, our ministry, right? We need to hear from God. John 5, 19 says that Jesus only did what the Father showed him. 
John 12, 49 says that Jesus only spoke what the Father told him to. Proverbs 3, 6 says that the Lord will direct our paths when we acknowledge him. Simply put, we must pay attention to God. We must listen to him. So quiet yourself for some time doing prayer and allow God to influence you some way, somehow. There it is. Do these seven things and you will be amazed at the powerful and fruitful connection and intimacy that you have with God. I hope these seven things take your relationship with God and your walk as a believer to the next level. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to leave a like and a comment. Unfortunately, YouTube will only recommend the channels and the videos that have good amounts of engagement, subscriptions, and views. So if we helped you in any way today, the best and the easiest way that you can thank us is by just subscribing to the channel, leaving a like, and leave a comment. Ask questions, right? Tell us what you would like us to make a video about next time. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. And thanks for growing with me as I grow with God. Let's grow.